Hello and welcome back. Let's talk about bones. I know this can be a scary topic for a lot of you, but we've got you covered. Keep watching and we will debunk a heap of myths and give you the tools to make the right choices for your dogs. This is where it's really important to understand the different types of bones so you can make informed choices for your dogs. There are three main reasons you should feed your dog's bones. First and foremost, calcium. Bones build bones. Calciums and minerals are vital for your dog's skeletal health. Secondly, and I possibly think this is my favorite benefit of bones, is teeth cleaning. Dogs instinctively know how to chew. They chew bones to clean their teeth, basically. Um, in the wild, for millennia, dogs have done this to ensure that their teeth are in really good condition and ensure their survival. Thirdly, the fun one, Edible bones and recreational bones are just fun to chow down on. So how do you pick the right bones for your dogs? There are two types of bones in your dog's lives. One, the fully edible bone, and two, the recreational bone. Both are pretty self-explanatory, I think. So fully edible bones mean just that. They can eat the entire bone. So if we move from basically the fully edible range through the recreational range through here, Frames, uh, these, these are chicken frames here, are fabulous. These frames are as cheap as anything, they're lovely, there's a little bit of meat on them, fully edible, the bones are very soft, obviously they're raw, everything is raw, do not ever feed your dog cooked bones. Um, so frames are lovely. Um, these are some chicken wing tips through here, these are really nice little snacks in my house, there's a little bone running through that's nice and soft, it gives the teeth a little bit of a clean as well. We've got some chicken necks through here. These are wonderful little snacks. If you've got a smaller dog, one chicken neck is fabulous. If you've got larger dogs, multiple chicken necks is a really good option to get some bone matter into their bowls without too much fuss. If you have a dog that uh, is a swallower, like swallows or gulps things whole, don't panic, okay? The best way you can do is teach them how to actually enjoy their bones. So what I like to do, um, sorry French Bulldog owners here, I'm really sorry about this because I know you're saying, but I've got a Frenchie and they, he swallows everything whole. I don't understand why Frenchies have so much problem swallowing things whole, but on saying that, give this a go anyway, you might have success, okay? So what I like to do is hold on to the end, they're like little handles, okay? Hold on to the end of the bone. If you are grossed out by raw meat, don't panic, grab a bit of kitchen towel, some paper towel or whatever, hold on to the end and let your dog have a good chew, like a good gnaw at it. Take them away and go, praise, 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 best doggy ever, it's delicious, yum, 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 give it back and have another chew. This way, they're understanding that these things are chewable. They're not, you don't have to swallow the whole thing whole. On saying that, if you have a dog that actually swallows a chicken neck whole, it's not the end of the world, okay? You're not gonna cause a structural obstruction rather, um, because the chicken neck vertebrae are very, very small and they break down very quickly in the dog's gut. So you haven't got any bones in there that are going to cause splintering or puncturing or anything like that. Unfortunately, my middle child, Tapita the Dash Hound, she sees this as an opportunity to inhale and she will swallow a chicken neck happily whole, which horrifies me because she weighs five kilos, but never had a problem. Her digestive acidic juices do the job. They break the bones down beautifully. Next on the scale of edible bones are these soup bones or brisket bones. Now, these bones have been cut by the butcher, as you can see. Now, this is a little bit controversial because some of these edges are a little bit sharp. They are soft enough, I can get my fingernail into this one quite comfortably, they're soft enough for the dog's teeth to be able to break down any of those edges, causing no harm to the dog's mouth. Um, these, again, cheap as chips, they're lovely. There's a little bit of meat on them, there's a little bit of fat. Pick your bones if you've got a dog that suffers from pancreatitis or can't handle too much fat. Make sure you just, you know, cherry pick your bones. Ones with not too much fat on them are fabulous. So you can kind of see what they look like here, they're lovely. So these are brisket bones or soup bones, very, very quite soft. Now, edible bones are non-weight bearing bones. That's things like tails, necks, the, the carcass, the ribs and that sort of thing. Um, kangaroo tails are fantastic as well if you can get uh, a good supplier of kangaroo tails. Beef tails are also fantastic. Now, the next one on the line of edible bones um, are ribs. These happen to be beef ribs. 
So my husband's probably quite, well, he is quite, I can see he's upset by this. These beef ribs were going to be his dinner tonight, but they're not now. Uh, <laughs> so they've been cut by the butcher. Again, there's a bit of a sharp edge, but they're quite soft, okay? It's a lovely amount of meat on these. So my dogs love these, but rib bones can be slightly problematic because they sometimes can splinter along this way. Um, so what you need to do with these, and obviously what you need to do with all bones is supervise your dogs. Don't leave them alone, okay? Let, make sure you just supervise them. Watch what they're doing when they're chewing them. Um, take, I take these ribs off my dogs when they get all the meat off and have a bit of a go on the ends there, just because I want to mitigate any risk of splintering. Again, it's just this particular cut of bone that will splinter slightly here, but again, it's not that problematic. Now, the next one on the list are these wonderful things. Now, if my dogs had a choice of anything in this selection, this is what they would all go for. This is the vertebrae, as you can see, it bends quite a lot here. This is the vertebrae or the spine from a sheep, okay? So it's got some of the ribs attached, all of the beautiful soft uh, tissue, connective tissues in here, which is lovely. It's got all of that wonderful joint goodness. Um, again, my dogs will always pick these bones out of all of the other ones on the table because, I don't know, they just seem to love them the most. They uh, eat, this entire part disappears all the way along here and they give all of this a really, really good go. Again, when we get to sort of this kind of length or whatever, take it off your dog, praise the dog when you're taking the bones away from them and throw them away, mitigating risks. Okay, the next bones on our list are the recreational bones. Now, this monster, this giant dinosaur bone, this is the leg bone, so it's weight bearing. This is the leg bone from a cow, okay? So it's got a little bit of meat on it, but it's just basically predominantly bone. It's really dense, you can hear that. Now, these bones are not edible, okay? These bones are purely for chewing and teeth cleaning. Now, I need to say something here, this is very important. This bone has been cut in half or sawn by the butcher, okay, to expose the marrow. They're called marrow bones, all right? Yum, marrow is incredibly nutrient dense, but it's incredibly high in fat. If you feed your dog a bone like this, they're gonna hollow out all the marrow, and you're gonna end up with problems with a pancreatic attack, basically. So if you've got a dog that is on the side of pancreatitis, avoid these at all costs. In fact, I'd avoid this full stop, definitely. If the bone is full, as in it hasn't been sawn in half, it's a fantastic recreational bone for a large dog, like a German Shepherd or a Golden Retriever or a Mastiff. I wouldn't be giving this to a Chihuahua, a <laughs> bit too big. Um, for uh, smaller dogs, these are weight-bearing bones as well, recreational bone once again. This is the leg bone from a, from a sheep, it's lamb bones. It's got that lovely knuckle on the end, you can see the knuckle there. All of this is edible, okay? There's all that lovely connective tissue again, so you can see there. Um, when the dogs take all the edible loveliness off and have a really good go at this, take these bones away from them, okay? Don't leave them lying out in the yard for them to bleach in the sun and dry out then you're going to have problems, you have splinter risks because the bone is very dense, you're going to break their teeth. Now, that's a nice segue to teeth, I think, because there are 42 teeth in your dog's head. So 42 of them. There's the front little peg-like ones, okay, then there's the long incisor canines, and then along the back, there is, pardon my meaty fingers, along the back there's the slab, the slab teeth. They all have different jobs when it comes to your dog's Di like digestive and, and ability to be able to consume um, consume bones and consume food. So the front teeth um, are used predominantly with edible bones, so the front little pegs uh, and the canines because they rip and tear at the carcasses. So for example, if you've given your dog an entire chicken frame or a rabbit or a turkey frame or something like that, they're gonna use their front teeth and their canines to rip and tear. Perfect for cleaning those front teeth. Doesn't do anything for the back. Then we move on to different shaped bones, like the rib bones, for example, which are the longer ones. Dogs will always hold longer bones in their paws like this, and they will chew and they'll use their back teeth. That's a really lovely shape to clean back teeth, okay? So different shapes do different things. Um, the recreational bones, the whole mouth is utilised. Not probably the front little pigs, but the, most of the canine and, and uh, slab teeth are definitely used, and they're clean, it's beautiful. Um, on rotation, if you're wanting to mix things up a little bit, you know, alternate, which is very, very important when you're raw feeding or feeding a decent, balanced diet, one of the things that I love to give my dogs is shark cartilage. 
Now, here in Australia, you can get shark cartilage readily available. It's ethically farmed, okay? It's sourced from, um, from sharks that are culled for human consumption. So that's what they look like there. These are basically wonderful 100% calcium toothbrushes. They're the best things ever, I love them. Most dogs find that they really enjoy them too. Um, again, check your sources of these. Make sure that they're, they're responsibly sourced, okay? We don't want to go and kill sharks for, you know, shark cartilage just for our dogs, that's crazy. This is what the shark cartilage looks like when it's in the shark fin. So you get the idea of where it comes from in the fish. Um, yeah, they're lovely. They're just wonderful teeth cleaning uh, tools. If you can get shark fins like this, as well with the cartilage in the middle, you double, you're getting a double, a double dose of goodness here. The fin, the skin is like sandpaper and it's going to do a wonderful job of cleaning your dog's teeth, plus calcium, minerals, all of those wonderful things. Just briefly, I need to touch on this. Yes, I've got my hands all over all of these bones, okay? Hygiene is vitally important. I'm actually touching these just for this footage, okay? I won't be mixing the, the meats up with my dogs or anything like that. And you need to, you know, obviously use common sense when it comes to handling raw meats and bones. Clean your hands, clean your utensils, use a plastic board if you have to chop anything up. Meat uh, handling, food, safe food handling is very, very important to mitigate any health issues you might have. Okay, so if you're grossed out by raw meaty bones, or if you have a really problematic swallower, like, sorry Frenchies, I'm picking on you hardcore today, um, we do have this wonderful product called Healthy Bones Meal Supplement. This will ensure you, your animals get all the calcium they need. There's a link below um, for uh, more information and a link to another uh, video that we've done about this wonderful product. So like and subscribe this video, please. And remember to always share this footage with other pet parents. You sharing will enable other pet parents uh, to empower themselves and understand more about their dog's health and making good choices.